Hi all, this is Dr. O, and in this video, we're going to talk about the muscles of mastication. And we're going to specifically get into their attachments, innervation, and all of the actions of these muscles. All of them, though, will act on the temporal mandibular joint, and they're innervated by branches of V3. You'll remember that most of trigeminal is a sensory um, nerve, but V3 contains a motor root and one group of muscles innervated by V3 is these muscles of mastication. Let's take a look at these muscles. From a lateral view, we can see nicely the more superficial group, which is the temporalis seen up here, and the masseter muscle. When we start to turn more posterior, we see a tiny peak of a muscle there, and then also one kind of on either side there. Let's look at them more from posterior, though, to identify. So here we can see this is medial pterygoid, sitting more medially, and this one is lateral pterygoid. So again, when you see sort of the peak of a muscle in that region, that's the lateral pterygoid we're looking at. Let's break each muscle down, starting with the temporalis. You'll remember the temporalis muscle has its origin on the temporal fossa, and that is this whole big area running up and along here. And there was a specific line associated with the muscle, and that's the inferior temporal line. So from that space, then it all comes down to this portion on the mandible, the coronoid process, and then medially we find that temporal crest as well. So when we think about the action of a muscle, we always want to be thinking about what happens when it shortens. As this muscle shortens, we can see it's sort of going in a superior direction. So that's pulling the mandible up in elevation. Also, a posterior, some of the posterior fibers run more in a transverse direction, and these act in retraction. So some retraction is also done by the temporalis muscle. The nerves to temporalis are called deep temporal nerves. So let's take a look at it isolated. So we'll see the temporal fossa reaching then down toward the coronoid process and the temporal crest of the mandible. And we have a nice view of the whole entirety of that muscle there. And now let's animate actually the movements so we can see how the muscle changes. So we can see it's stretching when, when depressing and protracting, and then it shortens in retraction and elevation. So our next muscle here is the masseter muscle. We'll remember that it attaches to the zygomatic arch superiorly and the angle and the ramus of the mandible inferiorly. And here you can kind of see a full outline of the muscle. Now this muscle sits lateral to the mandible. It really covers up that mandible. And the way that it's oriented, we can see that as it shortens, we will get some elevation. So this pulls the angle of the mandible up in elevation. Now also, the fibers more anteriorly, you can see have a bit more of this fiber direction. And with that, we see some protraction. Now you also note here that the masseter muscle acts in retraction. So it does both of these opposing actions. So the fibers pulling anteriorly here in protraction are opposed by fibers pulling posteriorly in retraction. Some of these more posterior fibers will, act, will be more active in retraction. And the masseter is innervated by a branch of V3 called the masseteric nerve. All right, so let's look at this muscle um, isolated in this model. So we can see that zygomatic arch here running then to attach to the angle of the mandible and the ramus of the mandible. Then when we see the action of the muscle, we can see during 
um, depression, it is not necessarily active. It's more so stretching. But as we get to this point, you could see how some of those fibers could pull forward in protraction. Then a lot of the muscle will elevate and pull it back in retraction. We can watch one more round of it, see the other side. Um, so you see activation both in protraction and in retraction, and definitely in elevation. So our next muscle, again, we're going to keep going in the same kind of ordering that we did before. So we'll talk first about the medial pterygoid muscle. This is going to be found in this space. In this image, we're really only seeing kind of that tiny bit here, but the whole muscle will run in that direction. So we're actually looking at more of a posterior view here to see it better. So we'll remember that comes from the lateral pterygoid plate, specifically that medial surface. Also that maxillary tuberosity, which is found sort of in this region. And it has an attachment on the palatine bone as well. This all then will mirror the masseter and uh, attach to the ramus in the angle of the mandible. Now, it, in the kind of paralleling of the masseter, it does similar actions. So we see both elevation and protraction um, through the medial pterygoid muscle, and the nerve to it is the medial pterygoid nerve, or the nerve to the medial pterygoid. So let's take a look at the action of it and where it is. So you really can't see it unless you remove the mandible, and it's best seen kind of medially or from inferior. So you can see that's the pterygoid plate there. So now when we're talking about the activity here, we see some protraction happening, and it's pulling forward, and then it also pulls the angle up in elevation. All right, so now let's talk about the lateral pterygoid muscle. So we can see this actually has two heads. So one of them running along in here, whereas the other runs more so like this, uh, both attaching near to the TMJ. So the superior head, the one we see above here, will attach to the greater wing of the sphenoid bone and then down directly to the articular disc and the capsule of the TMJ that you can see here. So the way that this is oriented, it's very horizontal, so that can act in protraction of the mandible, but it's also active during other activities. Then we see the inferior head, it's coming from the lateral pterygoid plate, specifically that lateral surface, and then back to the pterygoid fovea, which you'll remember is right by the condylar process. So that's gonna be about in this area, and then this will act mostly in depression. Now you'll note this is the first time we're mentioning depression in any of these muscles activities, and think about what might work along with the lateral pterygoid muscle in depressing the mandible. So probably the most important force for depression of the mandible is gravity. Woo. So gravity along with the inferior head of lateral pterygoid will open or depress the mandible um, and all the rest act to close, clench, and elevate that back up. So, this is innervated by the nerve to the lateral pterygoid. So here again, we'll look at it isolated in there. We see it a little bit better here, but again, lateral or medial to the um, zygomatic arch as well as the mandible. And then you see where that superior head actually attaches directly to the disc. So as the action is happening, we can see the pulling down of that inferior head helps in depression. And this superior head more so is pulling in protraction.
So now before we go through this, I want you to pause the video and take a second to write out which muscles are active in each movement of at the TMJ. So think about all of the movements and all of the muscles associated here and write them down. And when you're ready, we'll go through them together. So let's start with depression. This one is more straightforward and we just talked about it. So which muscle is active during depression of the mandible? That's going to be our lateral pterygoid muscle. Awesome. What else is helping us with depression? Good old gravity. Okay. So how about protraction? Which muscles are active during protraction? So both the masseter and the medial pterygoid are active here. As well as what other muscle? So that will be the lateral pterygoid and specifically that superior head. Awesome. Now, what is going to do the opposite here? Well, remember that masseter has a, the orientation of fibers differs enough that it will both protract and retract. What else will retract? The temporalis muscle. All right, now finally, let's talk about elevation. So what are the big muscles we think about when we close, when we clench? Masseter and temporalis again. And what other muscle? That'll be the medial pterygoid muscle as well. keep in mind as it parallels masseter it does most of the actions that masseter does except for retraction that's everything for this one thank you so much and if you have any questions at all always feel free to reach out and ask